Hi friends, it's Liz here. So today I'm going to show you how to make this journal from start to finish. And for this particular journal, we will be using uh, digitals from Victoria Designs. This is the my botanical field journal project pack. I'm going to walk you through the steps and at the end of the video, you will be able to have a journal of your own. As always, questions or comments, please let me know. Um, I try to gather pieces that um, I hope that you have at home, um, things that you could access easily to put this project together. So we will have the cover that we will make, and then of course the different elements like this flip out um, that you see here, our journal pages, and then a little pocket in the back. As I said, um, we will be making this from start to finish and um, I hope that you enjoy the process. So let's get started. So the first thing you are going to need are two pieces of cardboard and this size that I am going to be using are eight and three quarter inches by six inches long. And I'm also using two pieces of one inch by six inch cardstock. So to make this easy, um, I'm also going to be printing out, as you can see here, my papers from Victoria Designs Kits. And I'm also using this two inch um, packing tape that I have, um, how we'll be kind of using that to put this together. So I'm going to be turning my pages you see here um, on the back and I'm taking my cardboard. Now I'm using cereal boxes, but you can use chipboard or anything you have. I wanted to use um, cereal boxes because I know that's something that's probably um, readily available to many of you. You can um, maybe, if you want to reinforce this a little more, you could use two pieces of cereal boxes per each cover. So here you would be adding another piece on top of that. Um, so you would be cutting out four instead of the two. But for this project, I have two pieces like I'm showing here. I am adding my glue to the page and the glue I use is um, a glue that will not warp the pages. So it's a specific glue that um, is liquid glue, but it also does not make your pages all wonky. So here you see, I'm just um, adding the cardboard to the back of the paper here and I'm going to be cutting about a quarter inch um, off to leave a quarter inch I should say as almost like a little frame around the cardboard so you can see here I'm just eyeballing it and um, you're just going to be cutting around to make sure you have all your four edges almost evenly out so this is what that looks like now and then we'll be making these little notches on the end of the um, page here. So you're just cutting off a little bit and I'm not going right to that edge. If you can see here, I'm leaving just a little bit of space in between the corners. That's just going to make it a little bit um, cleaner of a fold when we fold these pieces over. So the next step is you can start bending your paper so that you can um, make sure that it will score nicely on all sides of your cardboard. And you'll be doing this to all the sides, so all four sides. And in this video here, I'm just going to show you one of the pieces and I'll be making the other one off camera just to save you some time in watching me repeat the same thing over and over again. So here you can just see that I'm just making sure that everything folds nicely. And then again, I'm adding my glue to one side first. So I like to um, glue the longer parts first and then I like to finish off with the shorter pieces. So you can see here, I start to bend it and hold it in the center and then um, make sure that it's adhered on all ends. Here I'm just taking a bone folder just to make sure that it's nice and crisp and the lines are you know just um, touching the cardboard properly and then here again I'm just making sure I have enough glue to this side and again I'll be folding it at the center first and then moving 
my way on either side just to make sure that it adheres properly. And again, I'll be using my bone folder to make sure that it adheres properly to the cardboard. So I'll be doing this again to the shorter sides and then I'll repeat that process with the other piece of cardstock. And when I'm done with that, I'll come back and show you the finished product. So this is what I was saying. If you wanted this, um, these covers to be a little bit thicker, you could have added another piece of cardboard before you started this process, glued it on top, and then you would have a thicker piece um, from the front and back. So you would have cut four pieces for the covers instead of two, um, but I don't mind the one piece of cereal box because the more I glue things to it, the stiffer the covers become. So I'm going to go ahead now and do the other one and then come back and show you when they are both ready to go and we'll move on to our spine. So here you can see I've got both sides finished, ready to go. Now I grab my two pieces um, that I mentioned before that we were going to need. Now I'm doing this as a preference. I wanted my spine to be a little bit sturdier. You don't need to do this part. You can just keep one piece of cardstock if you want to, or, or, or cardboard, I should say. Um, but I wanted to kind of make it a little bit sturdier. So I'm adding two pieces, so gluing two together. And also I feel that this will help my journal um, because I will be adding more things as I go and you know just holding on to the journal and using it for its various purposes um, I want the spine to just be a little bit um, stiffer when I'm working with it so here I'm just cutting off the little extra ends that I had and again this piece was um, or is six inches by one inch and width and you can see here that's how it's going to look so um, we're grabbing our tape next and as I mentioned this is a packing tape that I have and it is not that um, glossy packing tape it's um, packing tape that still has a little bit of um, sort of texture to it so I can actually glue things to the other side now what I'm doing here is I'm just um, taking a piece that um, will be able to cover my spine from front to back. So if my spine itself is six inches in height, um, I would basically double my tape to about 12 inches in length because I'm going to be folding it over. So you'll see what I mean here. So I'm putting my spine in the center. And now this is the part that's, um, you know, that you have to be very careful because of course the tape is very sticky and you're trying to get it as straight as possible, it still gives you a little room to move things around, but you just have to try and make sure you um, position it as, you know, as much to the center of your tape as you can. Now here you can see I started kind of moving it around a little bit accidentally because my glue is not fully dried. Um, wait for your glue to fully dry if you are using two pieces of cardboard that you have glued together. This way it'll just make it easier. And once I've settled on, you know, being okay with the center of my spine, I'm going to be um, moving it in place so that I can add my covers to it. So here I just made sure that I cut the last piece that I had there to make it the 12 inch in length. This is just a scrap piece of um, cardboard and I'm going to be using this um, almost like a spacer in between my spine and my cover. And this just helps um, so that when you actually add your cover to the side here, it won't be um, attached too close to that spine because you want to leave a little room in between the spine and the cover so that it is easy to open and close. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. Also, if you need to pause the video at any point in time, you can go ahead and do that so you, you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Just in case I'm going a little too fast, um, sometimes I like to remind you that you can do that as well. So again, I'm using my spare piece of um, cardboard and I'm again using it to space, um, to put a space between my spine and my back cover. 
and then this way I know that it's got just the right amount of space between both here. Again, this is the tricky part. I'm folding over the top part of my tape that I am using to um, bind these together. And then the bottom part of my tape, I'm making sure again that I put it on as straight as I can. Now, this doesn't have to be too perfect on the inside of the cover because I'll show you how we'll be covering that up um, to some extent. I'm taking my bone folder here and I'm just kind of making sure that I can see my fold lines. So this is again where we attached the cover to the spine and I'm just making sure that you can see where that is and also because it will help fold my cover a little bit better. Now be careful with this part uh, because depending on what you're using, your um, the, the tool that you use to score it might cut your tape a little bit which started to happen here so I had to be a little bit careful about that. Okay so the cover is um, almost put together. Now we will move on and I'll show you my journal pages and what I've chosen to do. So these are the pages that I'll be using for my journal. I have printed them borderless on my printer, which means I've taken up the full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper with the printed um, page. If I print it out the way that it comes in the kit, okay, you'll see that it's a little bit shorter. So this would be printing it out exactly how you would receive the kit. The way I did it is I switched it a little bit on my printer so that I could print borderless, which means I'm covering the entire page so that I take, um, you know, the full page on it and I don't have to cut any edges off. Grab some extra pieces of paper. I'm using everything that's about eight and a half by 11 fold it in half to make my additional journal pages. I have a mix of pages here and you can just go ahead and grab your favorite ones. I'm grabbing about, um, I don't know, about 10 pieces, but I'll tell you a little bit more about the full number of pages when we get to that. So this next step is decorating the cover. I thought we would do that before we start adding the pages inside and all the different elements. These two pieces that I have uh, are from the kit and I just went ahead and cut those up beforehand just to have them ready to add to my cover. Again, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going ahead and adding these two pieces, but you might want to embellish a little bit more or do something different with your cover, but um, you know, the pieces are available to me, so I'm using them for, um, for this cover and I love the way that it looks. I really like this image. I think it's just a, a beautiful framed piece and I'm adding this additional little piece that's also from the kit and that's just kind of adding a little element to um, just break up the, um, the cover a little bit, not make it so, um, you know, specific with just something in the center. And again, I may go ahead in future and add some other pieces, but I think for now, I'm just happy with the way that this looks. Okay, so the next step is going to be getting our inside cover pieces cut up just to be ready. And I did print out two pieces from the kit again, the same pieces, and um, they are printed in the eight and a half by 11 size. And I'll just be cutting them up to fit both the front and back covers. And um, what I want is when I add it to my covers that I still kind of glue them so they're not so close to the spine. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So you can see here, I'm just trying to make sure that it covers it up, it finishes it off nicely, and then it still leaves that little foldable um, line here that is not being interfered with. So these sheets, I cut them to um, eight and three quarters um, in width, I guess, because the the length is still the in, um, eight and a half. And I've got my journal pages ready to go as well. And you can just see here the variety of pages that I used. Um, I'll be showing you this a little bit more later, just so you can see what I have actually added to my journal pages. Um, all the sheets I have, I folded in half and they're about eight and a half by 11 size. I wanted to kind of make this very consistent in that size, just for ease of putting it together. 
So I've gone ahead and cut up one of the leftover pieces to three inches. It's still eight and a half by 11. Um, sorry, it's still eight and a half tall and it's three inches wide. And now I'll be folding this in half. So you could use your scoreboard if you wanted to. I'm just going to eyeball it because this is what I'll be using to add my journal pages to the spine. I want um, a hidden spine type of um, mechanism. And so I don't want to stitch through the actual spine itself, but I want this element to actually attach to our spine. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So I'm just folding it in half over my pages here. And this is what we will be stitching onto it. So for the next step, you're going to be gathering your items to stitch your pages together. I just have, um, I think this is a crochet thread. I use this for everything I've headed for so long. Um, and I have my awl, um, a needle with a nice um, big eye, and then some paper clips. So the first thing um, I'm going to do is attach um, this piece to my pages. And this is what is going to help us attach, like I mentioned, our journal pages to the, um, the spine, but not stitch through the spine. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So grab your paper clips, and this is just to hold my pages together and also to hold my little piece that I'm attaching to the spine. Now you can also go ahead and simply attach your pages to your spine um, by stitching them right through. But I wanted to, um, I didn't want to see my actual stitches on the other side of the journal. That's why it's got a nice clean, um, clean finished look because I'm attaching it on the inside and not through the outside. So you'll be cutting about three widths of your cover. So you can see here, I'm just um, pulling my string to kind of go through the top and bottom of my spine about three times. That's as much as you probably will need. This gives you a little extra um, of your um, thread as well, um, in case you wanted to attach anything hanging from um, your little strings that are left over. So now I'm just putting my thread in and getting my needle ready. I'm just pulling a little bit of the string through. I don't have to um, attach them together at all. As you can see here, just leave a little tail um, that's gone through. And now the other thing I like to do is um, if you make a little template, and this again is the same size as the one that's on the spine that I've shown you. If you fold your page in half and then you fold it in half again, this will give you the exact center measurement for your piece of paper. This is the center, and that's where um, you, know, you will be marking it. And this will just make it easy when you're poking your holes through your signature to know where they're supposed to go. And now I like to go about an inch from the bottom and the top. And again, it doesn't really matter too much because you're just attaching one signature. If you were doing more, this would be different. So you can see here, it's about an inch from the top, about an inch from the bottom. And again, I'm just marking it right at that center mark because I've got my center already figured out. And you can see here where that's going to go. So now I take this piece, which now has my three little holes, sort of my template for punching my holes through the pages. And I'm just going to um, just put it through the center here and poke the holes through. So um, what I like to do here is just to hold it in place, just put it through one of the paper clips. You can go ahead and put it through all if you want to, but I don't need more than one or two, just to hold it in place. Again, I'm trying to make sure that all my pages are together and that the paper clips are holding nice and tight. It just makes it so much easier when you're punching your holes through it and then also when you're stitching it through. So you take your awl, this is not your awl, you take your awl or you could use your needle if that's all you have. And I like to fold my pages in half. I find that it just makes it so much easier to go through everything. And you can see it po uh, poking through the other side in the center. 
and then I do the same from the top and bottom and again I'm just going to flip this around a little bit so you can see better I'm hoping you can kind of see it a little bit better than how I'm showing it to you so again you've got your three spots I'm going to the top one here it doesn't matter again which one you choose next but I just went to the top one there and then again I do the same with the bottom make sure that it's lined up I try and just kind of readjust everything as I'm working and then I'm poking through my bottom hole again so now I remove my template and then my holes are you can see all nice and lined up so now the first um, the first thread goes through the center to the outside of your signature and then you leave a little tail hanging on the inside then you move to the top of your signature and as I said when you fold your pages over it's just so much easier to get that needle through so now I'm pulling just enough to give it a little bit of tension um, but not too much yet because we're still working on it now I've gone to the bottom so from the inside out and now I'm pulling my um, thread through again and I'm holding my center pulling the back a little bit to make it just a little bit tighter and now I'm going through the center again back to the inside of the pages and now I'm just tightening it up a little bit and what you're trying to make sure happens here is you have a piece of thread on either side of that center line so I'm making sure that I have a piece on the top and bottom here or the left and right depending on how you're holding your papers and the center um, thread is basically between both this is where you tighten it a little bit just gently you don't want your um, thread to tear if you pull too tight take off my paper clips at this point because this is going to make sure that my pages are not um, you know tight in a certain spot and I line them up properly as I tighten my thread and here I just make two knots to make sure that it's nice and tight and those pages are not going anywhere now this is the part that I mentioned if you wanted to you could have left that initial tail of your string a little bit longer and then the end one would also be just as long so you could you know hang something from the center of the thread if you wanted to all right so our next step here is going to be attaching our journal pages to our spine and again this is where you get your glue and you make sure that um, you know everything is ready to go so for this process I'll be adding glue to the front and back little flaps that are left from um, what we stitched so these two pieces here if you wanted to you can go right ahead and add glue to the actual spine itself so where you have actually um, have your thread but I'm only doing it up into the edge here so I've covered up most of that um, edge of this piece as you can see here and then I'm trying to eyeball it and line it up so that it's almost like at the center of your spine again this you can eyeball because you can kind of see where your center is based on um, everything that you've already attached and don't worry um, with the glue if you're sort of working quick enough you um, can lift up your pages if you need to a little bit and then reattach them because at the end of it all we're actually covering most of this flap anyways so if you make a little boo-boo and have to readjust it it's not a big deal um, you can kind of move them around again and you will be covering it up mostly anyways and I'll show you what I mean by that so again I'm adding glue to this side I'm making sure that I attach it properly and I'm already noticing that I kind of want to move it up just a smidge so I'll be lifting up my um, this piece here just a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and lift it up again and then I'm going to move it back down so that it kind of as you can see there I'm just trying to move it up just a little bit because I, I just I don't know I just felt like I hadn't put it directly in the center how I wanted so I just readjusted it just a bit there and like I said once you're done with this you'll be covering most of this part up anyway so it's not a big deal if it 
you know, if you tear it up a little bit or you readjust it like I'm doing here. So again, I just wanted to move it up just a smidge to make it even from the top and bottom. Just because I can see a little bit of my spine peeking through and I wanted to make sure that it's nice and even. So there we go. And now your pages are attached. Again, I'm going to make sure that it adheres properly and you can let this dry for a little bit. Um, you don't have to finish working on it right away. And I'm just using my bone folder to make sure that everything adheres nicely to my cardboard. And then we will go ahead and add our um, covers for the front and back of the spine. Here I'm just trying to outline again how we did our little score with our spine. I'm just going ahead and doing it to both sides just to make sure again when my pages, um, when my book is folded, my journal folds, that everything folds nicely. Um, so as I mentioned before, if you added glue right to the spine of your pages, so where we stitched it on the back, um, the center here would be attached right to your page, but I kind of wanted to leave that little gap on the top there. I just like the way that looks. And now we'll go ahead and cover the front and back. Same process again, we'll just add our glue. And you know, you don't have to use this type of glue. If you've got double-sided tape, you can go ahead and use that. Um, but I like to use my wet glue. I find that it's a little bit more forgiving if I have to readjust anything. It's a little bit easier to pull it back up and kind of move it a little bit. So I'm just adding this to my front cover and then we'll be doing the back. And then I'm going to just show you um, how I want to add um, another piece to the um, front here to make a little flip out. And for the, um, the flip out um, pockets that I'm going to be adding to the um, inside cover that's optional of course um, you don't have to do that you can just go ahead and finish off your journal by covering the front and back covers like i'm doing here but i wanted to add a little bit more um, space to keep ephemera or to um, you know keep things in pockets that i want to um, access again and so I decided to make an additional little kind of flip out um, or fold out pocket I'll show you what I mean in a, in a moment and for that you'll just need um, a 12 by 12 sheet of paper that you can cut down um, and again it's um, it's purely optional but I think it just gives it a nice kind of interest to your um, journal because you've got sort of an interactive feature to start with and I always like kind of adding that. So you can see here, it looks beautiful. It's finished. You can fold it nicely. It looks like this cute little book. So here's the sheet that I decided to use to make my um, flip out pockets, I guess. Um, it is a sheet that I have cut to 11 inches by, and you keep uh, the 12 inch side. So 11 inches by 12 inches. And now I'm going to score it. So at the um, 12 inch side is basically where I want to grab it. And what I'm trying to make now is pockets. So um, it again, this is optional. This is whatever size you want to make. And I'm making sure again that my paper faces the right way that I want the pattern to face. So make sure you check on that. So I want to score on the 12 inch side we're going to be scoring at the, um, the point where I want to make my pocket. So see how that page is up eight and a half. I'm scoring at the eight and a half mark because I want the cover, this cover to basically be the same size as my journal pages. And then this will be, um, Again, if I were to score here, I'd be scoring in half, but you don't have to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and fold my pocket up. You can see what it looks like there. And then I'm just folding my um, cardstock over. If you don't have a scoreboard, you can just go ahead and do that. You don't really need a scoreboard to do this part because essentially what I'm trying to make is 
a little pocket folio that is the same size as my journal pages. So now we'll just go ahead and glue this to make the pockets and I'll just be adding glue to the center fold and then the two ends to make our pockets. And just as easy as that, we have made some pockets for a little fold out that's going to be attached to our cover. Now I'm just making sure that I wipe off any excess glue. This is one of those pieces that um, I need to make sure it doesn't get um, stuck on anything else. And then I'm just going to go ahead and get some pieces together to decorate this cover because I want it to have um, just a little bit of impact when um, you kind of first see it when we attach it to our inside front cover. So I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, the pieces that I will be using. I think I've decided on one already when I was cutting them up and so I just always cut a little extra just in case I want to use them again but I think I'm going to use this piece here to add to the front here and then this um, becomes a cover now because it's got a nice focal point um, and it'll look nice when I attach it to my inside journal um, cover. So when I was making this journal, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to use it for. And I think I'm going to be using it as another one of my reference journals. Um, I've been calling them ideas journals so far, but I think that's what this one will become. So now we're going to be attaching our little fold out pockets to the cover. And then I'm thinking that I also want to add something else to it. So we'll come back to this in a little bit, but right now I'm just um, seeing how it would look. I like um, the way it's looking and I like that it has that, um, you know, extra space that I can add things to it. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down to my front covers. Um, I didn't want to add a closure to this journal because um, I don't think I need it at this point. Um, I don't expect this journal to get super large. Um, at least not in how much I'm going to be filling it. But I also like that the covers are heavy enough that they sort of stay closed. So I don't need to do that. If I do decide to um, close it, I'll just, you know, kind of wrap a little bit of sari silk around it maybe. But um, I just decided that I didn't really want to have a, um, an actual attached closure to this one. So um, I like how that looks. And then on the back, I thought I would add one of the pockets that's already included in the, um, the kit. So um, I really like the way that these ones have been designed. And they already have the um, little pieces that you can score, as you see here. So I just went ahead and scored those. And now I'm just going to be attaching that to my back cover. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video so far. I really... Um, I almost messed up here, so don't do what I did. I was almost about to add glue to the inside flap, and I don't want to do that. The glue is on the outside of the flaps, and that just, you know, adheres them to the page properly. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, project so far. I've really enjoyed, um, you know, kind of going through the steps and making this journal with all of you. Um, I love the kits. Um, it's just such it has so many beautiful images and such nice variety. Um, I think this would be so beautiful maybe to make it, um, you know, for a gift for someone as well. And you definitely should have most of the pieces um, at home to be able to put something like this together. So I'm just attaching my little back pocket here and I'm just really loving how this looks. I think I will go ahead and add two more pockets to this and then I'll give you a flip through of the completed journal when we're done. So what I decided to do is cut up these um, pockets already. They, they come in the kit and I liked both of these. So I went ahead and again scored them and made sure that I folded them to have them ready. Now you see that little piece of white cardstock that's or paper that's sticking out from the back. It's just the way that um, 
that you can cut that up a little bit. You don't need to have that piece there. And then the uh, pocket here has the same thing. So I'm just going to go and cut that again, just to leave it a nice finish on that side. And then I'll go ahead and glue my pockets. And then I'll show you a quick flip through of the completed journal. I have had so much fun putting this together. I hope that um, you make one yourself. And I really did try to um, keep in mind those of you that are new to making journals, but also those of you that, um, you know, have been making them for a little bit. I wanted to make sure that everybody was able to uh, make one similar to this one. If you didn't want to do the hidden spine like I did with my, um, you know, my uh, journal pages, you could just go ahead and stitch, stitch it right onto your cover. Uh, but I wanted to have that nice clean line on the other side for the spine. I didn't want to see my stitching through. So I really, really like how that turned out. And I think it just made it super easy also to attach the pages. I hope that you found the same thing. So now that I have my pockets, I'm really liking the extra options of storage. So let's do a quick flip through. So we've got our little front cover here. And then um, we've got our nicely finished spine. I've got my front with um, four pockets here to start. And for my journal pages, I just used a variety of um, papers that I had. They're all about in a half by 11 in size, just folded in half. I think just one piece I used that was a little bit larger. I made sure to also have a beautiful variety of the digital pages that come in the kit. Look how gorgeous it is. And I, because I'll be using this as my reference journal, I'll definitely be adding to each page. For the center, I decided to use that image from the kit. I really like it. And then again, you just see the variety of papers. It can be so easy to put together. This is the one sheet that was a little longer, but I just folded a little um, interactive flap there. And that's it. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the share, that you make some yourself, and I will see you next time.